What's up, what it do, man? It's your boy, Dad the Gamer, aka Player One, the guy himself, and welcome to another episode of the Gamers Den. If this is your first time here, this is the show where I go over video game news, tech news, and a little bit of everything else. And we start this thing off with a thing called Quick Hits. Now, before we get into quick hits, just want to let everybody know there are links in the description towards merch, music, gaming channel, all kinds of stuff I got going on right now. And just to update everybody on the show, there, I'm, uh, I got a single out on Apple iTunes, you know, all that stuff is on all the big DSPs, all the where, anywhere you can stream, it's on music. I said it's on music. <laughs> it is music. It's on YouTube. It's, uh... You know, it's all over the place. You know, I finally got up there, so I'm starting to work and putting some of the catalog and some of the junts up there on iTunes and stuff like that. Y'all can stream it on iTunes, and y'all know y'all can just buy it, download it directly on Bandcamp as well. All of that should be in the links in the description, and it should be in the one that says everything Dead of Gamer. It should be in that one. So I just wanted to let y'all know that, and don't miss out on the gaming channel. You know, got content dropping on there every week, and we streaming every weekend over there. We uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. That's going up right now. It's, it's going up right now. Gold Saber Boy is in full effect. They say it's an orange saber in the game, but it looked gold to me. So it's gold. You know what I'm saying? This show is done in a type of for, uh, I said format. I can't talk again <laughs> in the uh, podcast format. So I will talk about the subjects and whatever the case it is. You know, we'll get to whatever the case may be. So that's enough of me talking. Let's get into it. Headline reads, Skate 4 will let players build skate parts together. So if you don't know anything about Skate, Skate is a game, it's in the vein of Tony Hawk Pro Skater, but it's not Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Some people will say it's better than Pro Skater, some say it's on the same level, or some people think it's not better than Pro Skater. Now I've played Skate, I've owned a Skate game before, and what I will say is, it's definitely not a Tony Hawk Pro Skater game and it is enjoyable and is dope and it definitely set itself the franchise set itself aside and apart and they're two distinct skating franchises so yeah they're both skateboarding games but they're completely different and skate has a dope fan base and i actually like the skate game too because it's the only one that's even up to par or above par of a tony hawk game and it's the only one even worth playing if the only one so Let's go ahead and get into this article. You know what I'm saying? See what we got. Skate 4 will reportedly have a collaborate quote and unquote free skate mode where players can make skate parks out of thin air alongside each other. This mode supposedly represents the emphasis that Skate 4 will place will place on user generated content when it releases, according to a report. Games beat report specifically. At the beginning of the latest episode of Grub Snacks, he discussed a recent Skate 4 leak and what he'd heard from playtesters who were able to try the game in this new mode, which appears to be an easy standout of the upcoming title. According to Grub, this quote-unquote free skate mode will let players become a skate architect and freely add elements like ramps to the game would ramps to the game world whenever and wherever they want it. Players can also reportedly delete these elements if they don't want to keep them up and this should all happen in real time. This will serve the incredible degree of customization that Grub says EA is reportedly eager to really show off with Skate 4. Okay, so let's talk about that, right? Even though I kind of butchered that whole little stuff. So let's talk about that real quick. This reminds me of, I don't know if y'all have ever seen Mythic Quest, right? So, Towards the end of season two of Mythic Quest, they're at this point in time, Poppy and Ian, they're co-creative co-creative directors of Mythic Quest. Mythic Quest is a game that I am made. It's a hit. It's the biggest thing. It's the equivalent of Fortnite in our world, in the real world, and how Fortnite just came out of nowhere and took over, and all the kids is on it, everybody on it. You know, it's one of the most popular games, Call of Duty, stuff like that, right? and poppy became a co-creative director now she became a co-creative director and when they had to come together to present to the big wigs like uh, ea or somebody in context of this article excuse me at the burp 
in context of this article, they had conflicting ideas and things they wanted to do. So they split the expansion into two different things and then whoever had the better one in the, in the presentation, that's the one they was going to go with. So Poppy, she had a idea that players could create in real time on a server and it would show up in real time on a server. So she did it in the episode in, in season two. But what happened is she caused like a worldwide electronic computer server crash because what she was trying to do may or may not have been impossible or not possible at the current space they was in which that's how season two ended up ending with Ian and poppy leaving mythic quest to start their own thing and then i guess that's where season three will pick up so that's the same thing i'm getting here with this customization in real time because it says in real time it, it, it says um hold on, hold on let me go back like these words is mad small. I might have to start just reading like old people and blow the words up like super mad big because just super mad big. My eyes is going bad. They just going bad, man. Yeah, but it says players can also reportedly delete these elements if they don't want to keep them up and it should all happen in real time. So that's what's reminded. That's what makes me think that's kind of what this is, but not so much on that big scale where it's going to be on an online server or streaming server or nothing like that. This will probably just be on the regular server. You can play a game and then you can hop in the online room, see somebody build something cool. The next day, it'll probably be gone because somebody probably say, you know what? Nah, let's change this up. And they scrapped that park and they made a new park so i think that'd be dope i think that'd be dope and i think that'd be cool in skate i think they had that element in skate before but maybe not to the degree of what they're trying to talk about but this is ea at the same time so it's it's kind of give or take and skate hasn't been out in a while so it's only a matter of time and see what they do and how the gaming space is now to see how that works out but you know that's going to be for that let's go ahead and move on to the last thing in quick hits Headline reads, Beloved Tales from the Borderlands filing getting a 2022 sequel it deserves. Now, why am I reporting on this, you may think? Because this is actually very important. I am a Borderlands fan. At a point in time, I was trying to be a Borderlands YouTuber, right? And one of my equipment couldn't keep up because it was just Borderlands 3 was taxing the same, just the same laptop that I'm using to record this, right? It was taxing that. And Borderlands 3 was just, eh. you know, and what I like to say about Borderlands 3 is the community, we had super high expectations and the game was just so low. It just, it, it, it just destroyed our super high expectations, right? So everybody called it trash or whatever the case, but now here we are full circle and everybody is saying, oh, the Tiny Tina DLC is trash and it's just a Borderlands 3 reskin. So essentially we got the pre-sequel situation all over again, but I digress. Let's go ahead and get into it. Today, Gearbox announced at PAX East that it was developing a new entry in the Tales from the Borderlands series. The original Telltale developed game was a narrative focused adventure game similar to The Walking Dead and The Wolf Among Us. The just announced sequel will star new characters and will be out this year. Oh, damn, bro. I don't like this. Oh, no. Excuse the language for the sensitive ears, but oh, no, I don't like this. What the holy fuck, bro? Hold up. Towards the end of the, toward, uh, toward the end of Gearbox PAX East Showcase, Gearbox Entertainment Company CEO Randy Pitchford announced on stage that after years of waiting, fans will get a new Tales from the Borderlands game later this year, unlike the original title. This one is being created quote unquote in-house by Gearbox. Okay. Okay. And then they had a tweet, but um, yeah, this website don't show tweets very well, apparently. Okay, so here's the problem with this. Brand new characters. Time out, bro. Why are we getting brand new characters? On top of brand new characters, on top of brand new characters. Because now, when it comes to, this, I'm, I'm gonna just preface this in disclaimer right now. This might be a, a 10 minute quick hit. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, bro. Like I really, 
I really like the Borderlands franchise as a game. Like, it's not too many games I really play and really go hard body and go to bat for nowadays, but Borderlands is one of them. As one of those looter shooters that actually got it right the first time around, you know? But as the track record shows, they just keep taking the wrong step over and over and over. First, it was killing Maya off. Why? Why would you do that? Then it was not adding the stuff in, the, in Borderlands 3 that would have made Ava a better liked character. Instead of her being a, a whiny crybaby ass, excuse me for the sense of the years, teenager. Um, why brand new characters? Because now they're literally repeating the cycle. They're literally repeating it. For like some way, somehow, these people at Gearbox really think this is the formula and that this is going to work. The problem is you can't tell me y'all been working on another Tales from the Borderlands game and then it's in-house, but then we're getting brand new characters. Everybody liked the Tales from the Borderlands from Telltale. We liked it that. Y'all might switch it up and do something completely different. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, number one. So that's a, uh, that's an assumption and that's theory craft and that's speculation so hopefully when it come out we ain't got to deal with no eh. and these new characters it's just like okay did the original tales of the borderlands introduce new characters yes or no we got reese and okay cool and we got the one guy cool and then they they blended over and, and meshed into borderlands 3 but tell from tales from the borderlands talks about things that happened behind the scenes and that you may have heard dialogue from in the main game of borderlands 2 and in the pre-sequel in that game so it's before during and after these events borderlands 4 isn't out and then you're going to give us a tales from the borderlands again with only borderlands 3 out and tiny tina's wonderland is not canon to the borderlands story so now I'm confused. Is this going to be important? Well, I guess this is what really my question is. And this is what I'm really on, right? Is this game going to be important to the, the main canon storyline of the Borderland franchise and the war and the Watcher and all that? Or is this just going to be some filler shit? Because if this is some filler shit, y'all giving us two filler ass games. Tiny Tina's Wonderland. Excuse me for the sensitive ears. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands and this in the same year. Filler. Just filler, bro. Mad filler. I'm not with this filler, man. I'm not with this filler. I'm going to just rock out on Borderlands 3, to be honest. <laughs> like, Borderlands 3 ain't looking so bad now, man. It's, it's just not looking so bad. But that's going to do it for quick hits. You know what I'm saying? that's all quick hits is you know if you knew here we we just go over stuff real quick i get my opinion on that and we talk about that so before we get into this main topic once again there are links in the description you can go ahead click that stuff they will help support the show keep the show going all that make sure you subscribe to the gaming channel all that all kinds of stuff content is always going to be coming out i'm always working so I'm always hustling, always working on everything. I'm never not working. And uh, before we get into the main topic, you know, I just want to talk about, um, you know, let's talk about overstanding, right? Overstanding is something I think everybody should be aware of and have a concept of that, right? And everybody do. But then it gets to the point of, well, what am I supposed to do, right? Because any and everybody will be in a situation and you will overstand it. So you play your position. But then it's also that question of what it, what can I do or what is it can I do? What what will can, you know, just some type of what you can do. What, what type of action or what type of move could you make? And, you know, and sometimes we don't like that position that we in. Sometimes we do like the position. Sometimes it's an uncomfortable position. Sometimes it's an unnecessary position, unwanted position, unnecessary situation, unwanted situation that may or may not have been caused by you or somebody you involved with. Now, you know, I just want to say that um, 
you know, it's different for males or women and men. It's, it's, it's really different. You know, a lot of people think, oh, it is. Or that. No, no, no. It's, it's different, you know. And I just want to say that, you know, everybody got their own situations. You know what I'm saying? Just don't be afraid to look into that mirror and, and understand your situation and understand that it's, you still have choices. You still have options and the things you choose to do have results and repercussions and stuff to them. So it don't matter what nobody say. It don't matter what nobody think, because at the end of the day, everybody got their own situations. And most people will take you trying to help them or tell them something that's oh well you trying to tell me what to do you trying to do this, this people are just respond emotionally first instead of really trying to think about how that conversation with you so when it comes to overstanding what i'm saying is you know i'll give you an example right i'm in a situation and it's not necessarily like oh whatever the case but it's just like it's no other answers i can give a person right I can't give no person no other answer but the one that they need and the factual answer, which is what they need. So like at the end of the day, if they come to me and they ask me about this or they tell me about this, they're going to get the same answer because at the root of the problem, that's what it is. As far as what they can or cannot control, that's what it is. And you know, and that's just where, and that's what you got to understand. Like you can't talk about, you know, when it comes to overstanding, you can't sit there and be so worried about what you can't do. You got to be worried about what you can and can't control and then just move in the realm and in the uh, space of that. So I just want to let everybody know that keep fighting, keep going. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. Just overstand your situation and know that you always got a choice and with your choice come repercussions and reactions and stuff to those. So. But let's go ahead and move on to the last thing on the show today. Now, this main topic is uh, this main topic might get a little deep, so we might be getting deep. You know, I had to preface y'all a little bit, like you know, oh, well, we getting deep now. Yeah, we might get a little deep this episode. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, let's get to it, right? Headline reads: Study claims Pokemon Go can help with depression. Now, before I scroll down, you know, um, Pokemon Go, I've played Pokemon Go. I probably have about three accounts only because I've lost a couple phones over the years and I don't remember the passwords or whatever. So it's like, oh, I got to make a new account. So I've lost, the, you know, a great Pokemon team. <laughs> I've lost a great team and stuff like that. But, you know, I bounce back even harder. So um, as far as it helping with depression, I think it do. You know, I don't even think you really needed a study for that. But, you know, I think it do. You know, it, it serves a good purpose for people and it helps people. So let's see what they talking about in this article. You know, let's let's see what they talk about. Pokemon Go's launch impacted society in some dramatic ways. Millions of players across the world took the opportunity that Pokemon Go's gameplay offered and began outdoor scourging searching for Pokemon. The result was that Pokemon Go became quickly became massively popular. It was so popular, in fact, that some saw an opportunity to conduct a study on what Pokemon Go may have unintentionally accomplished. Specifically, a study is claiming that Pokemon Go's launch may have materially lowered depression. Now, the thing about depression, right? This is what we're talking about. We're talking about depression. So the thing about depression is sadness or it's something happening in people's lives where okay they're not happy they're not pleased with with the outcome there's something just imposing on them there's a dark cloud over them just something they may or may not be able to get over so they down in the dumps or they got a funky shit ass attitude excuse my language for the sensitive ears you know it could be anything right and pokemon go you're forced to move you're forced to go outside you're forced to participate you can't i mean well you can sit at home in pokemon go but you're not you're not gonna get very far you're not gonna get the full experience you have to go out you have to go outside you have to go walk you have to ride your bike you got to get in your car you got to go to a park you got to go to an event you got to meet up with some people you got to communicate you know what i'm saying like one thing i tell people all the time when it comes to pokemon go is pokemon go is pokemon go is the closest thing 
we have to being a Pokemon trainer in real life. So if, you know, so for me, at the point in time Pokemon Go came out, it definitely helped. You know what I'm saying? And even the years after that, it definitely helped like keep me busy and or, you know, it gave me something to do. And it was probably at the at the time where I was really Pokemon going. That was probably the more positive thing I was doing at the time. And that was what really helped me keep my keep my head straight for as long as I was able to do it at that point in time in that space, because I was able to just go out, enjoy the day. Oh, I could talk to some random people. Oh, they Pokemon go to chop it up with some people, chop it up with chop it up with a dude, chop it up with a girl, you know, a woman, whoever. Yeah, da 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 you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. So, you know, it, it does have positive effects. That's just the whole point I'm getting at. So let's go ahead and continue, right? The study conducted by, I think I'm, pro I'm gonna pronounce this right, right? I wanna say Z or Z Chang. We're just gonna call you Chang. Of the London School of Econ Economics focused on an interesting metric to reach its conclusion. It passed depression related search data across 166 regions in 12 different countries before and after the launch of Pokemon Go, taking into consideration the differing launch dates between regions. Search results included terms depression, depression, stress, anxiety, and fatigue. Two of four of these search terms saw notable decreases following the launch of Pokemon Go. So yeah, let's read some more real quick. More specifically, the study says that consistent decreases in the, in the search interest of both depression and stress were found. Anxiety and fatigue, however, the study says did not see an impact on such on search intensity due to Pokemon Go's release. Based on the results, the study claims that the release of Pokemon Go was associated with a quote unquote significant short term decrease in depression related searches. And so that it may have resulted in the decrease in the prevalence of quote unquote local rates of depression so so this kind of just proves what i was saying right it proves what i was saying because i did say what at the point in time right because at the point in time it was great and yeah we don't really need to read more of this because that's yeah we don't really need to more of this so that's what i was saying right at the, at the point in time now they did say there was what decreases in depression and stress. Well, remember, Pokemon Go is a video game. Nine times out of 10, when people think of video games, they thinking of happiness, happy times, leisure time, you know, free time, you know, Aki kill time, you know, stuff like that, terminology and phrases like that. So what comes with the mindset of these things is, all right, I don't have to worry about nothing for me personally games for me right allow me to go into a whole completely different world they allow me to just have a new set of problems in a brand new space and the great thing about it is it doesn't have real world consequences and i can actually take my mind off of the real world issues for a moment in time and that moment in time is way better than probably 90 plus percent of my day. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Because this world is way more funner than the one I have to live in. It's way better than the one I have to live in. It's less depressed or depressing. It's less stressful. I, you know, the anxiety and fatigue you may or may not get, you may or may not experience in a different shape or form. So you might have high anxiety or your heart rate or whatever you you just might start feeling some type of way and oh, 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 because you play in a game and it's got jump scares in it and oh something about a boss you got to learn this or that or something just happened to you you know you like oh oh your heart racing you got anxiety you <laughs> because oh what no this boss fight is it's on you he on you the boss on you you know oh the jump scare you wasn't ready for this so now your heart going <laughs> You know what I'm saying? There's all kinds of stuff going on. Fatigue, you could get tired and, you know, exhausted playing video games as well. And with Pokemon Go in context of the article and what we're talking about, 
it's a very active game. It's a physical active game. Like I said, you have to get up and you have to go. Meaning you have to drive yourself to a park, drive yourself around town, drive yourself to an event. I'll give you an example. So it was some, it was some years ago and there's uh there's this place great for Pokemon Go. It's a lake and it's like a, it's a lot of Poke stops and it's like a square, right? And every corner has a Poke stop. So you can just literally walk in the square the whole time and spin, 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 spin. And at one specific corner, there's like lures and people are activating stuff in the game. If you play Pokemon Go, you know what I'm talking about. And plus, and it's that, and it's that corner specifically because there's like picnic tables, seats and stuff like that. And people can sit and rest. So this specific day, there was an event happening all across the world or whatever. It's like a Lapras event or something. And it was like stuff going on where you had to catch a Lapras, catch it is, catch it at. And I, for, I, I forgot who I went with. I either went by myself or I went with somebody else. But nonetheless, I digress. I, yeah, I was with somebody. I was with somebody. So me and this person, we show up and there's like, probably 50 60 somewhere in between 30 to 60 people at this place and somebody yelled there's a lapras over there all you see is waves of people running and running and running and running and then we ran back to where we was walking because it was a blastoise in the alleyway in front of somebody's house and it was just like, bro, we run it, we run it, we run it. You actually start breaking up a sweat. You know what I'm saying? And now with COVID, I mean, yeah, Pokemon Go is probably going to be here forever. But the thing is, it's an active game and you can get tired easily. Plus, everybody's phone just doesn't have infinite energy. So you can have a portable uh, portable charger, but then that's going to die. And then your phone going to get low on, on battery. And most of us can't afford to have our phone on 0%. Damn, we, we just can't afford to have our phone not actually on to receive a call or a text or some type of information. So it is a fatigue uh, event or a thing to do, excuse me, for the verb, in retrospect, because at some point, you're going to get tired and then you actually have to prepare to go is the portable charger charged up is the phone charged up how long you got how long how much time you want to spend doing whatever where you gonna go how long is it gonna take do you need to get gas is you gonna get an uber how long you gonna be here is you gonna go here 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 and here or is you just gonna go to this one place so it is a, a fatigued and exhausting thing because what did they say they said that, uh, let me scroll down here, significant short-term decrease in the pressure-related searches and so that it may have resulted in a decrease in the prevalence of quote, unquote, of local rates of depression. Yeah, and that was said about anxiety and fatigue. You know, I mean, yeah, depression in general, like you said, but you know, it says anxiety and fatigue. However, the study says did not see an impact on search intensity due to Pokemon Go's release. So that's what I'm saying. And and the, re and the reality of it is a lot of us have children. A lot of us have older parents, crippled parents, sick parents, grandparents, like jobs that's mad stressful, things that's mad stressful friends that's mad stressful like life is stressful bro so you know you might get an hour an hour and a half at the most if you're a normal person i would guess to really like pokemon go but then even that might be stressful and have anxiety and fatigue because now you might be an introvert doing ex extrovert things and you're not really able to talk to people because you don't have the social skills to talk to people you can't pay attention to social skills you're a little weird you're a little awkward but if you keep doing it, all right, you may or may not come out of that, you know? So it's a lot of other factors that come into play this, but the bigger conversation is do video games help with these type of issues, right? Depression, stress, anxiety, fatigue. Yes and no. As far as anxiety and fatigue, I mean, that's give or take. Like what is you playing when it comes to anxiety, fatigue? 
is you playing a, a first person shooter game is you sweating a lot like you just oh, 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 i can't hear i can't do like is you sweating playing that type of thing and now you just running up the meter on yourself or is you laid back playing a casual game like you know uh what's casual we love Katamari, Katamari Damacy Reroll. Like those is real casual. Game is mad simple. All you do is roll a ball everywhere. Less stressful. It's mad funny, <laughs> quirky. Like no anxiety, no fatigue. You don't, you know, there is no just big fallout of whatever in that world of the game. It's just very simple. You know what I'm saying? You could literally just kill all the time in the world, rolling the ball, rolling up stuff. Get the ball big, you roll over a cat, roll over a human, roll over the city. Like, it's very simple. So, all in all, in conclusion, you know, it's it's a give or take situation if video games do help people medically, not medically, whatever the case may be. For me, like I said, video games do help me as far as not being stressed out as far as depression and anxiety and fatigue i mean if anything fatigue is the only other thing that i i might be susceptible to because i, I like to play PUBG, which i to be honest with y'all i think i'm gonna have to retire <laughs> like that's just a bit too sweaty man they they hold me all they, they they hold me too much bro i'm taking a break but you know it's just as far as stress yeah I can just, for me, going into a different world and being able to be void of real world issues for a moment in time is is way better for me. And, and it just takes my mind off that stuff. And I can actually relax mentally for a little bit. And then it's like, all right, when I press that start button and hit quit and go, and go down on the menu and hit quit, it's like, all right, I'm ready to get back out here and do what I need to do. I don't know when I'm going to be back on this stick, but when I'm on it, I'm on it. You know what I'm saying? So if that's something that happens for you, where, you know, you find some type of peace and solace in a, in a whole different world, whatever the case, then that's cool, man. That's cool. You know, it's different strokes for different folks. You know, that's for sure. So most definitely, um, you know, different strokes for different folks. And that's going to do it for this episode of the Gamers Den. If you like this episode, like I said, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to wherever this may or may not pop up. Hit all the links in the description. Support the God. And I'm going to catch y'all next time, man. Gone.